We're not trying to hide things. In fact, sure after seems Mr. like it with 10 carloads of armed agents and kick in someone's door with no warning. A pistol permit holder in New York State, you might have to recertify online parameters under which someone can get a concealed carry permit. Carry permit, they must go through firearms training and an in-person interview. Whether the Constitution guarantees the right for New Yorkers to carry firearms in public. The Supreme Court's role. The Supreme Court's involvement in shaping firearm legislation has long been a contentious and impactful aspect of American law. The Court's decisions on Second Amendment cases define the boundaries within which states can regulate firearms, affecting millions of citizens and influencing the national debate on gun control. The recent decision to revisit state laws concerning concealed carry permits underscores the Court's pivotal role in interpreting the extent of individual gun rights. In the landmark case of District of Columbia v. Heller, the Supreme Court affirmed an individual's right to possess firearms unconnected with service in a militia and to use them for lawful purposes, such as self-defense within the home. This ruling set a precedent that individual gun ownership is protected by the Second Amendment, yet it left many questions about the scope of this right unanswered. The 2022 decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin further clarified this scope striking down New York's restrictive concealed carry licensing scheme. The court held that the state's requirement for applicants to demonstrate a special need for self-defense violated the Second Amendment. This ruling mandated that any firearm regulation must be consistent with the nation's historical tradition of gun regulation. The court's decisions in these matters will likely have far-reaching implications, influencing not only New York but also other states with similar laws. The rulings will also impact ongoing debates about the balance between individual rights and public safety, the appropriate level of government regulation, and the interpretation of historical legal precedents. Ultimately, the Supreme Court's role in shaping firearm legislation is a testament to its enduring influence on American legal and social landscapes. Through its interpretations of the Second Amendment, the Court not only resolves specific legal disputes, but also helps define the fundamental rights of American citizens, shaping the nation's approach to gun control for generations to come. CCIA, an overview. The Concealed Carry Improvement Act represents New York's legislative response to the Supreme Court's ruling in the Bruin case. Passed just eight days after the Bruin decision, the CCIA aimed to establish a new framework for issuing concealed carry permits, incorporating stricter regulations to control firearm possession and usage in the state. The law reflects New York's ongoing efforts to maintain stringent gun control measures despite the court's mandate. The CCIA introduced several significant changes to the state's concealed carry permitting process. One of the key provisions was the redefinition of sensitive locations where firearms are prohibited. This list was expanded to include a wide array of public and private spaces, such as government buildings, schools, public transportation, entertainment venues, and even certain private properties that do not explicitly permit firearms. The CCIA imposed more rigorous requirements for obtaining a concealed carry permit. Applicants are now required to complete extensive firearm training, including live fire exercises, and provide detailed personal information, including a list of social media accounts, to evaluate their moral character. This measure aims to ensure that only responsible and law-abiding individuals are granted permits. The Act also mandates regular renewals of permits, with periodic checks to ensure ongoing compliance with the law. This is intended to prevent individuals who might pose a risk from retaining their permits indefinitely without re-evaluation. Additionally, the CCIA enhances penalties for violations of its provisions, aiming to deter illegal possession and misuse of firearms. As the Supreme Court prepares to review the legal challenges against the CCIA, the outcome will likely determine the future of concealed carry laws not only in New York, but across the country. The decision will clarify the extent to which states can regulate firearm possession in the wake of the Bruin ruling and set new precedents for balancing individual rights with public safety. Judicial Responses to the CCIA The enactment of New York's CCIA has sparked a series of legal challenges primarily from gun rights advocacy groups who argue that the law contradicts the Supreme Court's decision in Bruin. These challenges have led to a complex judicial response, with various courts issuing different rulings on the Act's provisions. 
One of the primary cases challenging the CCIA is the Anonio case, where plaintiffs argue that the Act's stringent requirements and expansive definition of sensitive locations violate the Second Amendment. The plaintiffs seek preliminary injunctions to halt the enforcement of the CCIA, arguing that it imposes undue burdens on individuals' right to bear arms. In response to these challenges, several district courts initially granted preliminary injunctions against parts of the CCIA, recognizing that the Act might infringe on constitutional rights. However, these injunctions were not uniform, with different courts taking varying approaches to the Act's provisions. This inconsistency highlighted the ongoing judicial struggle to interpret the Supreme Court's directives in Bruin. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over New York, has played a crucial role in the judicial response to the CCIA. The court has generally taken a more conservative approach, often upholding the Act's provisions and granting stays on the lower court's injunctions. The Second Circuit has argued that the CCIA is constitutionally permissible and that New York has the authority to implement such regulations to ensure public safety. The Second Circuit's rulings have emphasized the need for a thorough judicial review process, arguing that the preliminary injunctions were issued without sufficient factual development. The court has called for expedited hearings to resolve these cases quickly, stressing the importance of a detailed record and comprehensive legal analysis. One of the critical arguments presented by the Second Circuit is that the Bruin decision addressed an exceptional case and that the CCIA's regulations do not fall into the same category. The court has maintained that states retain the right to regulate firearms, provided that these regulations are rooted in historical traditions and serve legitimate public safety interests. The Gun Owners of America and other plaintiffs have petitioned the Supreme Court to review the Second Circuit's decisions, arguing that the appellate court has misinterpreted the Bruin ruling. They contend that the CCIA represents an overreach by the state and that the Supreme Court needs to clarify the extent to which states can impose firearm regulations. Gun-Free Zones the concept of sensitive locations and gun-free zones is a central issue in the debate over firearm regulations, particularly in the context of New York's Concealed Carry Improvement Act. The Act's expansive definition of sensitive locations has sparked controversy and legal challenges, raising questions about the balance between public safety and individual gun rights. Sensitive locations, as defined by the CCIA, include a wide range of public and private spaces where firearms are prohibited. These locations encompass government buildings, schools, hospitals, public transportation, entertainment venues, and various other places deemed vulnerable to gun violence. The Act also allows private property owners to designate their premises as gun-free zones unless they explicitly permit firearms. Proponents of these restrictions argue that sensitive locations are essential for maintaining public safety in high-risk areas. They contend that certain places, such as schools and hospitals, are particularly vulnerable to gun violence and that prohibiting firearms in these locations can prevent potential tragedies. The aim is to create safe environments where people can go about their daily lives without the fear of gun-related incidents. Supporters also point out that gun-free zones can deter criminal activity by making it more difficult for individuals with malicious intent to carry firearms into sensitive areas. They argue that these measures are a reasonable exercise of the state's authority to protect its citizens and are consistent with historical precedents of firearm regulation. The legal challenges against the CCIA's definition of sensitive locations have brought these arguments to the forefront. Plaintiffs argue that the Act's restrictions are overly broad and impose undue burdens on individuals' Second Amendment rights. They seek to have the courts narrow the scope of sensitive locations to align more closely with historical precedents and the Supreme Court's directives. 5. The Impact of Supreme Court Decisions on State Gun Laws Supreme Court decisions have a profound impact on state gun laws, often redefining the legal landscape and influencing how states regulate firearm possession and usage. The Court's rulings set binding precedents that states must follow, shaping the balance between individual gun rights and public safety measures. 
To apply for a pistol permit, you'll need to be at least 21 years old, complete 16 hours of training. The Supreme Court has just struck down a New York state law that restricted who could carry a concealed handgun. State lawmakers have made New York state's gun laws some of the strictest in the entire country. And then turn over your social media accounts. Once you have a permit, you'll also have to recertify. The 2008 District of Columbia versus Heller decision was a watershed moment in Second Amendment jurisprudence. By affirming an individual's right to possess firearms for lawful purposes, such as self-defense within the home, the Supreme Court set a clear precedent that the Second Amendment protects individual gun ownership. This ruling prompted many states to reevaluate their firearm regulations to ensure compliance with the newly clarified constitutional standards. In 2010, the court extended the Heller decision to the states through the McDonald v. City of Chicago ruling, which incorporated the Second Amendment into the 14th Amendment. This meant that state and local governments were also bound by the Second Amendment, further restricting their ability to implement overly restrictive gun control measures. The 2022 decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin marked another significant development. The court struck down New York's may-issue concealed carry licensing scheme, which required applicants to demonstrate a special need for self-defense. The ruling emphasized that any firearm regulation must be consistent with the nation's historical tradition of gun regulation, setting a new standard for evaluating the constitutionality of state gun laws. These Supreme Court decisions have had ripple effects across the country. States with restrictive gun laws have faced legal challenges, prompting courts to strike down or modify regulations that do not align with the court's precedents. For instance, California, New Jersey, and Maryland, among others, have had to revisit their concealed carry laws and other firearm regulations in light of the Bruin decision. As the Supreme Court continues to address Second Amendment cases, its rulings will play a crucial role in defining the limits of state gun laws. The decisions not only resolve specific legal disputes, but also guide states in crafting regulations that balance individual rights with public safety, shaping the future of gun control in America. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.